Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race versus the Community. We were racing 500 horsepower C-Class cars. Now this makes for an interesting build as these cars are likely to be quite difficult to drive as a few cars had some troubles in turn one. Especially if you get your car with a wheel caught out on the grass there. You've been getting all kinds of issues. Yeah, to get the 500 horsepower and keep the cars in C-Class, you are rather limited on handling parts. I was driving a Lamborghini Miura and trying to make it three wide down the hill at Road Atlanta. It's, uh, well, it all kind of went a little bit wrong for uh, for a javelin. Ran wide, got caught on the wall, couldn't stop across the grass. Amazingly, we kind of all scrambled and avoided him. Unfortunately, a, a Bel Air would, uh, would be the one that would collect the AMC. Uh, well, yeah, we, we tried to fit three wide and kind of ended up all over the place, but we, we <laughs> us lot got away with it. Uh, I then proceeded to get up the inside of a Corvette. He tried to keep it keep it alongside, but couldn't quite match the Amura. And then we came to the really rather long straight. The Lamborghini would pull away down. Further up ahead, this was the battle over third place between a Shelby Mustang, a Mazda RX-3. I was very surprised to see that get 500 horsepower and staying C-Class and a Dodge Challenger. And everybody was going a little bit sideways out of the, uh, the chicane. The Mazda doing the rather brave around the outside up towards the final turn. Gets the position before they ever get to the corner and then it's everything slide as they uh, try and put the power down through that final turn. The final turn is scary enough as it is normally let alone when you're in cars with a lot of power and, well, not much in the in the way of grip. My Lamborghini continued uh, its charge through the field. I went for the Mira just because I wanted to drive something different. I expected there to be lots of muscle cars. I figured the Mira would be something uh, a little bit different. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty damn good choice of car. We almost went three wide at the top of the course. Got a little bit of a bump from Mustang, but then <laughs> gets a big slide through the corner. Uh, yeah, that, that was a slightly scary moment when we were all piling down towards that corner I'm in the middle of two rather large muscle cars we got through it all all right and then we come down this uh, very long straight the Mira was a very good car in a straight line despite having a mere 503 horsepower pretty much at the minimum that we could have it was one of the quicker cars in a straight line as I cruise up to the back of the Dodge. I think about having a go at the inside, but I don't quite know where, I don't quite know how good the brakes are on the Dodge, and I didn't dare risk it. I then got a big lockup. That's a sort of, <laughs> you see my car jink out of the way when I realize I'm very nearly in the back of a, of a muscle car, and that's sort of given the Dodge a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a gap to me. Unfortunately, the Dodge would then fall off the road a little later on that would put me past him. He'd then come under pressure from a Corvette. Uh, the Corvette tries to get to the inside, finds a lot of curb, gets very, very sideways. The Corvettes were certainly one, uh, certainly one of the most popular vehicles in uh, this event. They're also perhaps one of the easiest to make into a handling car almost for this. They're certainly, they seemed to be some of the better handling vehicles, maybe not quite having the straight line speed, but they were uh, decent handling enough. And as we come towards the straight, we can see the Dodge is struggling, struggling to get that power down as he slides uh, out of the out of the corner but now we have a very long straight and the dodge could uh, at least keep level pegging with the Corvette. Uh, the Corvette had a much better run onto the straight, but the Dodge was now reeling it uh, back in and keeping it <laughs> keeping it there, and the Dodge is on the inside. Unfortunately, too much speed through the kink on the straight. The Dodge can't quite hold it on the road. It has to kind of be braking on the grass, and that's an incredibly scary place to be having that sort of moment. The Camaro and Mustang that were battling behind them kind of slotting around the Challenger. The Camaro gets himself to the inside as they go over the hill down towards the final corner that could have gone a lot worse like like seeing a car on the grass there i was expecting there to be a very very big accident but amazingly everybody managed to avoid the dodge and the dodge got it stopped as well so yeah well done to everyone there for for not having a, a very very big accident i would get myself up into third and was chasing down the second place mazda the mazda was ridiculously fast in a straight line as you would perhaps expect 500 horsepower in this car and it only weighs sort of 2200 pounds so much lighter than everything else the problem is, to keep it, or to get the 500 horsepower and keep it in C-Class, you sacrifice a lot of handling parts. It has tiny tyres compared to the likes of my Lamborghini and the muscle cars. It was a handful. It looked a handful, certainly, uh, when I was sat behind it. All that time it made up on the straight was lost through that chicane, and now I'm right on the back of the RX-3, having a look, trying to get past. In the end, he would just run a little bit wide. 
hit the hit the curb, get dragged into the wall, and uh, that would be a relatively easy pass for me. And certainly these kind of cars struggle. There was a Datsun in this race as well. The Datsun, similar thing. Very, very fast in a straight line, but really, really struggled through the turns. And it would get worse for the Mazda as it just ran a little bit wide coming down the hill and managed to do a double roll off the tyre bundle. That's quite quite impressive. We see the Datsun was fighting a little bit over third place with the, uh, the Corvette there. Yeah, some of these cars were were very, very tough vehicles to drive. At the front, though, it was another Lamborghini Miura that would go on to take victory. Started on the front row and would uh, scamper away from the rest of the field. Fastest lap. And uh, while we were all far too busy arguing amongst ourselves, yeah, the Lamborghini would pull a decent-sized gap and go for a slide through the final corner. I would make it a second place, so a 1-2 for the Lambos, while the Datsun would finish in third. Third. Our second race, we would go to the uh, the shortened Yas Marina circuit. Unfortunately, while Lack had played very nicely on you know, most part for race one, it wouldn't in race two. You see, the the Rolls Royce and a Gullwing both get turned by Lag and then flung across the track. Takes out um, a number of cars. I think at least five or six cars were uh, were were killed in that one. Cars farther back with me, amazingly, would make it through. Although, admittedly, slowed down quite a lot as uh, as this Mira gets to the lead, going around the outside of the Corvette. Tough place to get an overtake that around the outside there. The curbs here are notoriously uh, mean to, to cars. Putting a wheel over the curbs, very easy to have them uh, spin out. The Hemi Cuda was also having a look at uh, trying to find a way past the uh, the vet. Trying to go around the outside. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a long way to go around the outside. It's both corners you'd be stuck on the outside for. In the end, the Hemi Cuda couldn't quite get it done there and would have to settle for falling in behind. The most unusual car of the event definitely goes to <laughs> Peugeot. I had no idea you could get 500 horsepower in this, let alone get it in, or keep it in C-Class. Did not expect to see uh, a Peugeot. <laughs> Muscle car had a very late call to decide he wanted to go into the pit. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to see uh, a Peugeot. And I was surprised. It was doing decent in a straight line. Sure, the Datsun's ridiculously fast. We, we all know that. But it's pulling away from a Corvette in a, <laughs> in a straight line. Pretty impressive, and it can keep around the outside of the Datsun through turn one, but on the inside for the next bit, and would fend off the two cars behind. Unfortunately, it would all go wrong for the poor Peugeot. And while I was fighting with the Gullwing, I'd get slightly tagged, I'd get turned around. The Gullwing was trying to break and avoid me, and kind of the Constantina effect would end up with the Datsun in the back of the Peugeot. And while it didn't suffer sort of terminal damage, I suspect there was some damage done to the uh, the Peugeot. It would have been interesting to see how, how well that car could have done. I really didn't expect that vehicle to a make an appearance in here and yeah for the for the lap that it survived quite nicely uh, it did look like it was half decent uh, the corvettes were fighting over what was now third position despite being of course the same car you can build them differently the blue corvette certainly had much more of the way of straight line speed but around a circuit like this you kind of want a bit of handling sure there is one long straight but the rest of it is quite technical and the red corvette much more confident on the brakes uh, gets it stopped can go around the outside and the blue car finds out the dangers of the curbs wheel over the curb spins the back end around he does catch it before going around in the complete circle but yeah it's uh, the curbs here are, are very very horrible uh, the, the hemi cuda now now in third was coming under fire from my Lamborghini, trying to get to the inside. This is a silly place to try to overtake. I thought I might just squeak it up the inside, couldn't quite do it. It's a very, very fast corner there, and these cars, my Lamborghini had a mile of understeer. It was one of the better handling cars as well, despite the mile of understeer that we see <laughs> through here. Running wide, I'm stuck on the outside around the two parts. So much understeer from the Mura. However, I have the acceleration out of the out of the corner and could get the uh, the move done. The reason I had so much understeer is to keep my car in the uh, in in C class. I had to have standard front tire widths and standard tires, of course, uh, while I had huge rear tires. So I had good traction, but uh, yeah, there there was. A lot of understeer in the uh, the Mura. The Hemi Cuda would continue to drop back a little bit, though now coming under fire from a, another Corvette. However, this one would have a much tougher time trying to get past the Plymouth quicker in a straight line and was able to defend through the corners. The uh, 
the, the Corvette was looking and looking and just couldn't quite find a way past. It can be quite difficult to overtake around this circuit. There is only one really long straight, uh, and if you haven't got the straight line speed, turn one is not a particularly good overtaking opportunity, and the rest of the corners, it can be a little bit difficult to find a way past, and then the back markers were fighting over various positions as well. Yeah, the, the Corvette was having a tough time trying to uh, to get past. At the front, it was the white Mura, sorry, that was leading the way. Uh, he, he enjoyed a rather large lead for a lot of the race, and the closing stages, me and the Corvette in second were catching, but we had nowhere near enough laps to uh, to get to him. So Amura would take its second victory of the event. And, and speaking of the <laughs> the other one, uh, it was an almighty tussle for, for second place. When we figured we weren't going to catch the Lamborghini, it uh, was, yeah, let's just fight over fight over this one. I closed up massively to uh, to this group. My, my Mura was by far the quickest car uh, on the track. I think me and the Corvette were the only ones under the one minute tens around here. However, my understeer got the better of me as we came under the bridge. I had a wheel over the curb and just couldn't get my car off. I thought all chances of second were gone at, uh, at this stage as I threw my car into the final corner. The, the brakes on my Lamborghini really were quite impressive. I gave absolutely everything through the final turn. Get as good of a drive off the corner as I could and I was catching. I was catching the vet really rather quickly. Unfortunately, the finish line was just too close to <laughs> the final corner. Couldn't quite do it. One more lap and I might have had him, but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't quite get the, uh, the pass down there. Our third and final race would go to the Catalonia Full Circuit. I thought I'd run the full layout with, uh, with these cars uh, this time around as we all tear down towards the first corner. First corner is a... Um, an interesting one at uh, this circuit. They're <laughs> trying to go three wide. It's, uh, it's it's very easy to outbreak yourself, especially in cars like these that are pretty damn fast in a straight line but have very little in the way of handling. Uh, basically, everybody did pretty well on this opening lap, but getting through there without any major, major incidents. A Maserati led the way after the first few corners, but was instantly under threat from a Jaguar E-Type that got his nose up the inside through the next corner while the Chevelle would uh, get past the Impala. Now, if you do get stuck on the outside, you can keep your car all the way around the outside there. Unfortunately for the Maserati, he couldn't quite do it, and then he's too far back to have a look through the next corner, but he is still close. Catalonia, the full circuit is a little bit perhaps easier to overtake in some respects than, uh, than the national circuit. You get a little bit more sort of straights coming into the corners, a bit bigger braking zones and so on. Maserati had a look, unfortunately compromised himself quite a bit on, in having that look on the inside. Didn't quite get the run out of the turn and the Jaguar would pull away. While that was going on further back, I'd had another relatively good start, made up quite a few positions on this uh, this sort of first half a lap, and it closed up to uh, the back of a Datsun. Had to get the move done on the Datsun relatively quickly. These things are so stupidly fast in a straight line. I was just much neater going up the hill, could get my car alongside and past before we come around this, this top of the hill corner. You get a very close up look at the back of an Impala. Again, another good overtaking opportunity is uh, down into this next hairpin. I was close, but wasn't quite close enough. Again, not quite sure, you know, where the braking zones are uh, with uh, with these cars. I didn't dare have a huge dive with the Mura. In the end, I didn't particularly need to. Was just neat off the hairpin. Got better acceleration than the Impala. Could uh, get alongside, and he didn't really want to uh, to fight the point too much, as I had just so much more, so much more grip. Further back, and it was crazy. Quite, quite frankly, this, the, the front had been quite, quite calm. This was just so many cars trying to fit into the same piece of tarmac. And uh, yeah, a van was at the head of this little train of cars as we come onto the straight, and then everything wants to get past it. The uh, Skyline goes first. There's a GTO and the Monaro, or the, uh, the sorry, the, the HSV. Uh, <laughs> Uh, go go either side of it. The Datsun has all of the speed and tears past the, a lot of them. They were full wide at one point. Down there, there's a Camaro at the back of the group as well that uh, that would go past. The GTO just outbreaks himself a little bit on the outside. Don't know if he had a weird on the grass or something. Just runs a tad wide. That lets the Monaro pass. The Datsun gets himself in a lot of trouble across a curb, up onto two wheels and can't get it under control. The uh, HSV then goes to the inside around the very, very long corner and gives the Skyline a little bit of a bump to, uh, to straighten it up. Yeah, 
a lot of cars trying to fit into the same piece of tarmac. It doesn't normally end quite so well. Uh, I was continuing to uh, put pressure on the cars ahead of me, having a look at trying to get past the uh, the Chevelle as I get an awful lot of sideways. This Mira was a pretty good car to drive, but even so, <laughs> it still had its moments when things got a, a little bit scary as we go through this uh, very slow section of corners. Not much room to overtake through there, however, I get a much better drive. The Chevelle gets out a little bit wide, perhaps on the curbs, can't quite put the power down as well, and I get the Mura to the inside around the final turn, and then can blast away on the straights. I, yeah, I, was, I was pretty pleased uh, <laughs> with my car uh, in general. Um, further back, and the other uh, Datsun was putting pressure on a Maserati after it made a mistake coming into the chicane, clipped the curb on the inside, that put the Maserati massively, massively sideways, however the Datsun sort of rides the curb a bit on the inside, gets a little bit of a slide, but uh, it doesn't really matter, you see the speed that these Datsuns can get up to down the straight, it's a fairly long straight that you have here at Catalonia, and the Datsun is gone. That the, the straight line speed of these cars is is ridiculous. My Lambo was quick, but there's no match for the uh, for the five tens. You can see the size of the gap he's got back to the Maserati. Admittedly, through the corners, the Gran Turismo will start to close, but uh, yeah, there's absolutely no match for it down the straights, and the Datsun is uh, safe enough, although you can still see it is uh, it is sliding around. Unfortunately, things would go wrong quite drastically for me. I ran wide at turn three and dropped myself back to in the second place battle. I then got lag spiked and stuck on the sticky grass and I would cause some problems for this uh, Cuda. I was basically stuck on the grass at the edge of the track and the Cuda had nowhere to go. Uh, my car was wrecked. The Cuda was still holding on despite having taken what I would imagine was fairly substantial damage. You'll see it kind of bobbing around uh, and so on. He was still fighting, still trying to get past the Gran Turismo as the Gran Turismo just outbreaks itself a little bit down into turn one. The, uh, the Plymouth goes around the outside of the second part of the corner and reclaims his position. So yeah, may have suffered a little bit of damage, but uh, <laughs> was still in the fight. The Maserati's there sort of just having a look, but uh, it's just a little bit too far back to do anything as they approach up towards the other uh, next turn. Yeah, if you're close enough, you can have a dive up the inside here and Certainly the Plymouth runs a little bit wide, probably damaged brakes and suspension, but uh, yeah, Maserati was too far back to do anything. And the front, it was the, uh, the Jaguar E-Type that was to go on and take victory, even with a very, <laughs> very sideways moment at uh, the, the final corner. I think it had a wheel on the grass across the curb and that tipped the Jag very, very sideways. Uh, with the Chevelle coming in second and the Datsun would get third. A little bit unfortunate for me, uh, I, I kind of failed the Mura, so I had probably the fastest car on the track here. I think there's me and the, the GTO were a couple of seconds a lap quicker than everyone else. Uh, GTO got involved in a crash somewhere and I, I yeah, I, I didn't have the the best of races for me. I, I could have definitely kept up the, uh, the Mura winnings, but uh, yeah, slight shame about that, but still uh, quite a lot of fun. It was definitely an interesting, an interesting challenge, kind of trying to build the cars to uh, to this class because you kind of end up having to compromise them quite massively. Interesting to see what people came up with. Definitely didn't expect to see a, uh, a Peugeot. Anyway, that is it uh, for this week's Versus the Community. The next one shall be held on Thursday the 20th of August. We're going to be doing open B-Class, so no particular restrictions on it, it's just B-Class cars. If you want to sign up and take part, then you can go to our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Fair Race Versus the Community section, and you can sign up in there. But uh, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.